The house was marketed as a teardown, but we saw it and thought, no, this house has so much potential. That's an exciting location. It's out there on Morris Island. There's always going to be constraints. They don't have to limit you. This is ridiculous. Of course it is. It all began on a day very much like today. Patrick Hayden was enjoying his morning bike ride and another summer with his family in the Cape. Little did he know, he was about to see an opportunity that would stop him in his tracks. Actually, at that time, it looked more like this. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's meet the Haydens. This is Patrick and Leanne. We met in Boston. We were set up by my nosy Aunt Lisa and her nosy sister Lisa, two Lisas that know each other in Kentucky. Patrick moved here for college and I moved to Boston for my work. We were of course like, oh, just because we're from Kentucky doesn't mean that we'll, we'll make a match. But uh, you know, 12 years and two kids later, here we are. In 2011, we found this house while I was cycling and um, was very interested in doing a sort of a project in the area. I sort of laughed because he comes to me, I have a brand new baby, and I'm like, no, I don't want another project. <laughs> The neighborhood was appealing, the property was appealing. The house was very unique. It was different from every other house in the neighborhood. And it was marketed as a teardown, but we saw it and thought, no, this house has so much potential. So we just started exploring it and he started brainstorming, like how could I make this really cool house even cooler? And just like, yes, we're gonna do this. And I'm like, all right, we're gonna do this. It may have taken a lot of imagination to see the potential of the house, but the location couldn't be beat. The property is located on Morris Island, which is at the southernmost tip of Cape Cod, just outside the city of Chatham. Prior to this purchase, the Haydens co-owned a home in the area with another family. So it was exciting to have a place of their own. But there was a lot of work to do. I would be very reluctant to take on a renovation like this if I were not married to a contractor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. He has a network of people that he can tap into. One of those people in Patrick's network is longtime friend and architect Monty French. Patrick and I have been friends for 22 years now. He and I had graduated together. He gave me a call one day and he's like, hey, I need you to come out and look at something with me. So, you know, we jumped in the truck and made the, made the long drive down to Chatham. And uh, we saw the place, and you know, it's an exciting location. The, it's out there on Morris Island, near the point. Very beautiful setting, and you know, we both loved the fact that it was a bit of a contemporary house and not a typical uh, house, and so it had its own identifiable characteristics. And when we walked into the house, we both had a lot of the same comments about what we, we thought we should do with the house and the opportunities were. And it was an exciting process for me, and I know it was very exciting for him. And, you know, you can, you can always see it in his face. Monty, along with architect Alex Yoon, took on the design responsibilities while Patrick handled the construction. We really, you know, have a deep passion for architecture and construction and in the built world, so I think that that's why we always kind of gravitated towards one another. 
It was a little tough for me to envision what it could be in terms of updating and giving it a new life, but the shell of it was great and the space was good. We just wanted to give it a, a different layout that would accommodate our family and be a little bit more modern and updated. We've, we've sort of evolved to have a pretty good process. Basically anything that's attached to the house, I'm responsible for and everything that's not attached to the house, she's responsible for and we bounce ideas off of each other. Patrick's construction experience and long-standing partnership with Monty French Design Studio meant Patrick had a lot more freedom when making decisions during the renovation. Yeah, so um, the drawing set that we have here is 15 pages long, which is a very small drawing set for a renovation addition such as this. And typically the architect would have a much more substantial drawing set. Uh, and I think that this kind of illustrates the nature of the design build relationship that Monty's office and Alex and myself have, where we have sometimes very light drawings and figure out the details as we work through the construction, um, which, which works well. I'm used to renovating buildings in Boston that are 100 and something years old, and this is a 40-year-old house, so it's fairly simple. The Morse Island residents had three phases to the renovation. The landscaping, the original house, and the addition of two master suites with a guest suite above the garage. First on the list was making a backyard a usable space. Morris Island has private access to the beach and amazing views. But when Patrick and Leanne purchased this property, it was filled with trees. As they cleared the backyard, they began to see the home's full potential. So when you pulled up to this property, when we first bought it in 2015, it was very heavily wooded, sort of like a house in the middle of a forest, really. It felt uh, like the forest was kind of enclosing on the house in some ways. And when we did the outdoor renovations, we really cleared the land, opened up the space so that the house felt like it was on an open piece of land. It was just dense forest when we first moved in. And if you go up to the top, you'll see that there's an ocean view, but we cleared all this and made a little playground area for the kids. Cleared it out enough to get the materials in and out and the equipment in and out without messing with the front yard. Then, the same year, we had a huge windstorm that took out like 10 or 12 trees, so it cleared it even more. Uh, the inside of the house kind of felt crowded too because the layout was very choppy. We took this wall down and it was just a, a very little small kitchen with floor to ceiling windows, which was really nice, but it also limited the functionality of the space. And we added the lower cabinetry and a bigger island and took the Eden kitchen part of it out and moved that to the, to the living room, dining room area so that it just was a, a space that people could hang out and you know relax in a little bit more. Then, then we kind of moved in and just chatted with Monty and Alex about strategies for further, further developing the property and expanding it. In the meantime, the kids had a blast. Monty French and his team had a unique challenge. Combine a new modern addition to late mid-century architecture and make it feel cohesive. And I think just one aspect, you know, beyond the geometric form was that, you know, kind of transitioning into the 70s modernism. So the materials and the shape are already kind of quite strong and very kind of period. So, you know, just recognizing that the plan, the form, the materials are a bit dated at this point, and you know how Patrick and Leanne lived and what they envisioned this house um, is a bit more contemporary. They knew that these additions would need to happen, but how it was going to happen, we were totally unsure of. So, you know, we had done a couple schemes where, you know, you're literally in 
adding on to the house. And, you know, what is that? We found when we tried to add something to it, kind of almost like an appendage, it was, it felt like an addition and it felt like an, something that was kind of added on top or right next to it and never f quite felt uh, correct. After living a couple summers in the home, the Haydens knew that they wanted to add on. But they also didn't want to miss a summer during construction. So the architects presented an unconventional idea. So it was kind of nice to live in the house for the few years while we were just figuring out how to do this, because our original plan was basically just to take this wall where that was formerly the master bedroom and pull it out and sort of do the same kind of stack master over master scenario much closer to the house. And as we lived in the house, a couple of things influenced, like people hang out in the kitchen, we'll see in a minute, and like, it's noisy. And I think I was trying to figure out how to do that without completely destroying the existing house. We kind of conjured up some ideas here in our office, and we thought, well, what if we just create the addition built separate from the house, and then later connected with minimal evasion to the house. And then they came up with this glass bridge, which they love glass bridges, and it's really cool, actually. We know the constraints that we have to work with then, and you know, there's always going to be constraints, and they don't have to limit you. The glass bridge not only provided year-round use of the property during construction, it also presented the opportunity for a creative design feature. Uh, we had a landscape architect basically do a, a sort of a schematic landscape plan. We ultimately designed, built it, um, the landscape we did all ourselves. But he came up with the dry river concept, which we really liked. brought them down and created the driver bed. We actually did it during the sort of the rough framing process so that the boulders were in place when we went to finish all the house, the windows and so forth, so we weren't bringing machinery and giant boulders around the work, which was a good solution, but it was also challenging to work around to like get the glazing in the, in the bridge and so forth. But I think it definitely adds to the, to the separation of the two structures. And it's a cool factor, the kids love it, they go and probably doing that now. They go and walk up the riverbed and just run around the house and keep doing it. All the granite, the reclaimed granite, we actually dug up from our office renovation in Boston. Um, and all the boulders we shipped in from Leanne's brother-in-law's house in New Hampshire. He was burying rocks and we were, we were sending dump trucks there to take them up. So all these rocks and all those rocks over there, they come from New Hampshire. So we built a dry riverbed. We we're gonna make it actually an active river, but we thought that would be too much effort to maintain. Whenever he drew up the plans for this, he was like, we're gonna do this dry riverbed. And I was like, that sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's cool. It is cool. It turned out really great because I was just thinking, well, shouldn't we just artificially put water in it to make it <laughs> look like a like functional? But it looks really cool like it is, I think. While construction was underway on the new addition, Patrick got another crazy idea. So when we decided to do the renovation, number three, to do the addition. He was like, I'm gonna put a drone up and see if we can see the ocean from the top of, the, of this addition. And if so, maybe we'll consider a roof deck. And I was like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. It just seems so excessive. I don't know if we'll spend much time there. And uh, here we are at the roof deck. Um, as you can see, you know, we've got a great view that came straight out as you uh, went up the ladder and as you get out, you can really just see uh, the ocean. You know, we've talked about a lot of the, the visual transparency of the house and obviously uh, we've looked at cable rail and in the end we decided to keep it glass um, and just preserve the views out. You know, I think from a budgetary and design sample, we kept the footprint, you know, compact. And so the sleeping spaces are really just kind of for sleeping. There's no real space for additional lounge or seating area. And so, um, you know, we had always kind of waffled on the idea of a roof deck and 
by the time that we had decided on a footprint, um, you know, it was getting built, it was, uh, it was set. And, you know, I think as this thing was getting built, and I think Patrick probably had an opportunity to get up here and realize the view he had, he's like, I need an access up here. And so by that point, uh, you know, not, to, not that we were retrofitting the design, but, um, you know, the entire idea of the ladder being a permanent stationary thing inside the master bedroom itself was always kind of a uh, not so pleasant from a <laughs> from a user standpoint. So the Haydens have this amazing skylight up to the rooftop deck. The problem is there's no ladder or any way to get up there. So what they did was they put this pole in. What you do is you swing on the pole, jump up, get your momentum going, and then you grab onto that ledge. Oh, hey Samuel, how are you? Where did this come from? No, you don't, you don't, don't hold it, don't hold on to it, it let go. If you hold on to it, then no, then, then no, then no, then no wiggle, and that will make me fall off. Did you know that it did this? Okay, now, okay, look. So you pull this stair out of the wall. Again, kind lock of a knot of the fill. You lock, lock, lock it in so it's not wobbly. And then open the skylight. Gonna kind of put these grooves so you can both pull it out and give you a handle to go up. Patrick, tell us how you convinced Leanne to get a rooftop deck here. Uh, I think I just did it. He just did it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, but once it was done, she was definitely sold. So, because uh, she spends a lot of time up here in the in the late afternoon, it's kind of like the space to hang out, um, cocktail hour, if you will. While you're um, getting ready for dinner, bring it. The guests. Yeah, actually, at night. At night, yeah. It's the, great the, to come up here and look at the stars. There's no no light pollution out here, so you can see like unreal stars, satellites, and everything. Uh, we got the gas fireplace, and um, yeah, you can see a little. A little sliver of the ocean view. You can this, the sand. You can see that's the end of the Manawa Island that I was showing you. My favorite part is definitely the roof deck, <laughs> which is kind of ironic considering <laughs> how opposed to it I was at the beginning. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> but it is nice to be up here and just feel like you're kind of in a treehouse. Really, it's a nice little space to spend time. It's been amazing and we feel really lucky that we've had this place to, to be away from the city urban life, which is so dense. And um, we've had the space here to be with our kids and they can just open the door and walk out into the yard and um, feel like this is our little piece of normal in this world that's been kind of crazy for the past year. So it's been really great. We're good friends with Patrick, and, and uh, but there's always that demand for like things to be perfect because you visualize these things and you draw through these details and you want it to be a certain way and but we were pleasantly surprised with how everything turned out. I think there's a lot of components and elements that are we're quite proud of um, you know obviously the, the retractable ladder and the skylight and all the kind of beautiful detailing and the woodworking there is is you know is a, a great little piece but I think what I appreciate the most about the project is that we were able to take a very particular and peculiar existing house and add to it in a kind of harmonious way that is seamless. Uh, and what we added is only contributing to the greater whole uh, and how the family uses it, mixing old and new, you know, existing and proposed uh, into one home rather than a kind of collection of spaces I think is uh, what I, I like most about the project. I just had to come up here one last time to see this incredible view and to sign off. I'm Ben Roberts, and this is Design 
versus. Wait, hey, there's someone still up here. Hey, no, don't don't put it down yet. Hey, Samuel, no, Samuel, don't bring it down. Samuel, I can't control it from up here. Samuel, you want candy? Samuel, 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 Samuel!